You're listening to Crochet Business Chat with psychotherapist, artist, and designer turned business coach, the crochetpreneur, Pam Grice. Well, hello there, Crochet CEOs. Welcome to Crochet Business Chat. I am Pam Grice, here to help you turn yarn into money with therapy for your crochet business. I am so glad you're here. Let's go now and check in with our next guest. Hi, I'm Megan Gonzalez from Nurture Knitwear, and I have a question. Um, What is the best way to grow your audience when you have a small following? Okay, so why don't you tell me a little bit about what you do and who your customers are, because that's going to kind of determine where we go with this. Sure. I am a knitwear designer and just starting up a brand new blog. Um, and I design patterns. Um, right now, my tagline is stylish knits for busy women. And I'm largely, I'm targeting women uh, like 25 to 55 who are working, a lot of them from home, kind of a very relaxed feeling vibe. A lot of them are moms um, and just really busy, don't have a lot of time, but want to create something beautiful. Um, I really like um, trying to empower women to carve out a creative space with so that they can refresh and rebuild. Nice. Okay. So your your target audience, uh, you've done some research on who that's going to be. And that's perfect because then the question is, where are they? Because you're going to grow your audience where they are. So um, you said that you have a brand new blog. And so typically my my first line of attack is creating content. So when you have a blog, creating content that that person you're speaking to is going to be looking for. So whether it's putting out new designs or creating blog posts that meet their other needs, whether that's creating a creative space or, um, you know, finding time to create, because you you say, you know, this is a busy woman. So, um, you know, say, what are the needs of my target customer and how can I create content that will draw them to my site where I can then share my products with them and get them to follow me, get them to sign up for my email list, all of those things. So content is number one. Um, And so starting content on your blog is great. And then that gives you a way to then reach out in other avenues like Pinterest, um, where your content will live on forever, which is a great thing about Pinterest is that um, your content doesn't just disappear in a feed. Uh, It is searchable. It's like Google. So that when people are searching for how do I find time to, to knit? How do I create a quiet creative space in my home? How do I make a beautiful knit shawl? Whatever it is, they can find your pins and get to your blog. So I love Pinterest. So developing a Pinterest strategy that gets um, your content out there is, is, you know, a great next step. Um, I took some notes because I knew it was the question you were going to (laughs) ask. Um, Yeah. Okay. So the next one, so we have um, create content and be consistent with that content. Get on Pinterest. The next one is getting in front of other people's audiences. So whether that is as a guest blogger or getting on podcasts like this one, there are knitwear podcasts out there as well. Um, Getting on people's uh, Instagram feeds, Uh, with their live videos, their designer um, interviews, those kinds of things. And then also um, in the crochet world, we do a lot of blog hops and bundle type events and those kinds of things. If if you could find those or even host those, which is even better, inside of the knitwear community, that will drive a lot of traffic and it will get other people to help you get in front of their audiences. So it's one of those things that has a mutual benefit for both you and the people that you're collaborating with. So um, those kinds of things I think could be super helpful. Um, Next one is advocate for yourself. So this is one of those things where a lot of us are comfortable saying, my stuff is amazing. My stuff is awesome. My designs are beautiful. You really need them. You're going to love them. Those kinds of things. We have a hard time using that kind of language when we talk about things that we're creating. 
Um, but people aren't going to believe they're amazing until you believe they're amazing. And I know that you do. So your, your designs are beautiful. People need to see them. But at the same time, like you advocating for this is why this is beautiful. This is why this pattern is um, is professional. It's easy to read. It's easy to follow. It's error free. So all of the things that your customer is concerned about when they make a purchase of something that you sell, tell them up front why they want to purchase that um, so that you're being your own advocate with those people. Okay. And then finally, have a way for them to continue the conversation with you, whether that's inviting people into your DMs, um, getting people to sign up for your email list, uh, any of those ways that you can continue having conversation and building a relationship with them. Because the way it works with designers is so often people aren't just purchasing the design, right? They're supporting yeah. a person that they've come to care about and enjoy. So um, being able to have that back and forth with them on social media, in your email, uh, gets to a place where they're like, oh, I'm so happy to support you. I love the things you believe in. I love the way that you serve your people. And so I'm happy to purchase from you. Um, rather than just being an invisible person in the background of your business. Sure. So um, those are my like top five ideas on how to get in front of an audience and grow it. Um, what, what are you doing right now that kind of fits in with that? Um, I'm definitely on Pinterest. Uh, that's, that was my either October or November <laughs> big push. Um, so I have four to six pins a day going out um, using Tailwind. I am also working on getting the blog started. Um, right now I'm publishing once a week and in January, I'm gonna be upping that to two or three times a week um, and putting out uh, new patterns and old patterns as well as tutorials and you know just kind of like life things about, yeah, how to find time to knit and, and things like that. Um, I'm on Instagram. That was like where I was for two years while I was starting out. Um, but still only have about 3000 followers. So it's not a big reach. Um, so that's, you know, that's kind of my big, my big sticking point is that, you know, there's only so much that I can ask of my, my little following. Um, so I also have a Facebook group of like a hundred people and an email list of 70 people. So they're all, you know, itty bitty. Um, okay. And just, so once your blog gets rolling, the drive is going to be to get those people on your list because a lot of times with social media, people don't then click through to your actual content where you're going to be making ad revenue, where you're going to be selling to them. So creating an opt-in that is irresistible for your ideal customer is going to be really important. So that when they get to your blog, so all of your, all of your um, content, all of, well, all of your social media content is driving people to your blog. Once they get there, get them on your list. That way you can have that back and forth. Because with following on social media, you have so little control over what people see or when they see it or if they see it. Um, at least with email, you have some control over who your content is getting in front of. Mm -hmm. So growing your list, I think, is going to be really, really important. Okay. Um, for the list, currently I have one free pattern. Um, which 70 people have signed up for. So that's great, but I'd like it to make it more enticing. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I had talked to you before about possibly doing like a read your nets workbook. Mm -hmm. uh, but I was wondering if maybe like three free patterns offer like three or four, three free patterns and then do the read your nets workbook as um, my, I can't remember what the exact word is. Yes. All right, yes. Yeah. But, um, I didn't know if that might be better because people are coming to me because they're interested in my patterns. So it seems like saying, Hey, here's not one, but three, and maybe even giving them four instead. Then, um, but I don't know what you So, think. So giving away a bunch of free stuff, more is not always better okay? Uh, because we don't want to attract too many people who are just there for your free things. Yeah. So we want people who are actually going to be spending money with you. Sure. Um, 
So I don't want to, I don't want to like dump a bunch of free things on them unless it was going to be a free pattern anyway. And then it's okay. Like, I just don't want you to like give up the possible sale of an item because you're giving it away for free without. So maybe yeah. like, cause I, I'm planning to do one free pattern a month on the blog to hopefully mm -hmm. attract more people. Um, so maybe like this, the premium version of those for free. So let me tell you what I did when I first started and it worked really well. So um, what I did was I had the free pattern and I would create a library of, and so I just said, don't give away a bunch of free patterns. I gave away a bunch of free patterns. So okay. don't listen to me. Um, so what I did was I created a library where if they signed up, they could have a free PDF of the free pattern. So it wasn't the premium pattern. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a pattern with upgrades and multiple sizes and extra embellishments. It was the pared down version or a single size of the pattern was in this free library. And so they weren't getting my premium pattern. If they want the premium pattern, they can purchase the premium pattern, but they got that free one. And so that that library would just build and they would have continual access to that library of just the pared down free PDFs. So there was the extra step of having to create two PDFs for each pattern, you know, the yeah. free version and the upgraded version. But I eventually took that down once it got to be about 50 free patterns. Okay. Um, but in the beginning, it was a really great jump start to get people on my list. I think I had, so within the first, I think five months of my blog, I got up to about 1200 people on my email list just wow. from that push. Okay. So, um, so I don't know that it's a great long-term goal because ultimately it would be great if you could create a membership and people could have pay for a membership to get all of your premium patterns, right? So if you're giving them all of those free patterns, they may not eventually do that. But in the beginning to get those people onto your list, I think it could be a really great option for you. Sure, because I'm not sure if I'm going to continue the free patterns after the first year. Okay. But it's my strategy for the first year to like really start bringing some people in, hopefully. Yeah, that's great. So, you know, uh, there's going to be different seasons and different phases of your business. And so this phase is like all in getting people on your list. And so, yeah. um, so you do what you need to do to make that happen. And then you shift to the kind of nurture phase where you're nurturing those relationships, you're creating more patterns, and then you're selling to them. So that will be the more um, profitable phase. This phase is the growth phase, then you go into the profitable phase. So yeah. um, you'll get there. So was that helpful? Do you feel like you have a couple of steps to take? It was, yeah, I, I think that was really helpful. Thank you. Great. So how can people find you when they're looking for knitwear designs or tips on creating creative spaces and all of that? Where can they find you? Sure. Um, I am on nurturenitwear.com. And if you go to nurturenitwear.com slash newsletter, you will get that free pattern as well as uh, any other freebies that are coming your way soon. Um, <laughs> and, and then I am also on Instagram at, at nurturenitwear. As, as well as I have a fun Facebook group. It's small, but we're fun. Um, and that is at facebook.com slash groups slash nurtured knitwear. They are my nurtured knitters. So Yay, perfect. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, um, I'm excited to see how you grow in the next year and how these strategies work for you. And um, I'll be keeping an eye on things. Thanks for, um, thanks for connecting and thanks for asking your question. Yeah, thank you so much. All right. See you later. That's it for today. Be sure to get your printable handmade business binder when you go to crochetpreneur.com slash binder. And never miss an episode when you subscribe to Crochet Business Chat on your favorite podcast listening platform. All guests on the podcast are students of the Crochetpreneur Business Academy. If you'd like to learn more about this biz boosting program specifically for crochet business owners, go to crochetbusinessacademy.com. And I want to thank you so much for spending time with me today. It means so much that you'd hang out in the studio, and I can't wait to do it again next time. Until then, I'm cheering you on. <laughs>